In other words, if you're sitting all day watching TV, a lot of diabetics do that, or most of us, when you do that, you don't need, you're not burning any sugar. Hello everyone, this is Dr. Kim, America's Holistic Foot Doctor. Welcome back to Holistic Diabetic Foot Ulcers Cure Series. On my first video, this video, we talked about what is an ulcer, where do you get them, and four causes of ulcers. On the second video, four medical treatments, we talked about the brighting it off, loading it, increasing healing potential, and correcting foot deformities. On the next two videos is about six holistic treatments to overcome diabetes. Diet, supplements, exercise, sleep, stress, love, joy, peace, forgiveness, and most importantly, your commitment to improve your diabetes. This third video, which is uh, part one of six holistic treatment, we will talk about new understanding of four types of diabetes, metabolic syndrome, we call them syndrome X, two important players such as insulin and leptin. Then we'll talk about what diabetic diet you should follow as well. Let's get right into it. The part one of this, we're going to talk about in general what is happening with your blood sugar. We need to control your blood sugar. We talked about that through your diet and exercise and all the other things that we talked about. Next one is the neuropathy. Once you in improve your diabetes, your sugar is well controlled, then your neuropathy condition will improve as well. There's a lot of supplements you can take to help with vitamin B complex, alpha lipoic acid. There are a lot of things that can nourish your nerves to improve your neuropathy con condition as well. Control ischemia or circulation. There's many things you can do as well. Uh, you may have to see another doctor to improve your circulation, but internally your diet and exercise and all of that will improve your circulation as well. There's new understanding of diabetes. There's four different types of diabetes. I know you only know two, type 1 or 2, and some people are told that you have prediabetes. So what does that mean to have a prediabetes? Well, the numbers are a little bit different at uh, different sources, but overall from being pre-diabetic to being diabetic, your A1C, which is uh, hemoglobin A1C, which is an average of your blood sugar for the last three months, which is a pretty accurate because now you're not just looking at one day's your blood sugar level, but your average of your three months of diabetes, uh, your blood sugar level, so that is pretty accurate, uh, has to be below 6.4, which is about 140, 145, your uh, fasting blood sugar level. When you're 6.4 and below, you're pre-diabetic. When you're above 6.5, which is about 150 and above, then you're, then you're diabetic. And there are three types of diabetes that's, uh, that we'll talk about today. So uh, if you're pre-diabetic, obviously um, you don't have to be on medication yet because it's not severe, but some people already put on medication, which I, I think it's uh, a bad idea because you can easily uh, uh, become not pre-diabetic by getting on a diet and all the things that I'm going to talk to you about. Uh, if you become diabetic and it's really difficult to control, then at least for a while you need to be on medication because you don't want it 200, 300, 400, uh, which is where I was. I was 360 when I first diagnosed with diabetic and they told me I have to go to the hospital, but obviously I, I found my ways to handle it without going to the hospital. But most of you have to go to the hospital because you don't know how to handle your blood sugar being so high because if your sugar is too high, it can cause all kinds. You can literally go into a coma. If you're over 400, 500, and you be in the hospital, you can't even, uh, you, you don't even know what's going on. So it's very important for you to make sure that your, your sugar is not out of control. So you may have to be controlled in the beginning with medication. However, you can quickly get off the medication unless you're type 1 diabetic. Now, Type 1 diabetes is from um, autoimmune disease. There are over 80 autoimmune diseases out there. Well, what are the autoimmune diseases? Our theory is that your stomach lining gets violated by you know, many different causes. I've talked about it in other videos. When you have a lot of processed food, a lot of sugar, you're not hydrating well, there are a lot of unhealthy things you do. Then it opens up the gut lining, we call them leaky gut, and then your food particles get in there and your body starts fighting it, thinking that it's something foreign, which is, it is foreign, it's not supposed to be there. And it causes inflammation and causes all kinds of problems. And it goes into many different organs of the body, about 80 different places. It can go into your skin, it becomes lupus, it can go to your joint, it becomes rheumatoid arthritis, it can go to thyroid, it becomes Hashimoto's, uh, it can go to the brain, it becomes Parkinson's disease. There are many things, but it can end up in pancreas 
and you're not able to produce your insulin and you become type 1 diabetic. And we're about halfway through my six holistic treatments for healing diabetic foot ulcers. If you've enjoyed this video so far or learned something new, leave the words holistic cure in the comments below and be sure to give this video a thumbs up. That's really bad because your body cannot produce insulin. When that happens, what happens is that your blood sugar cannot be controlled and you need insulin. So this is a group that needs insulin into the body and you get it daily to keep the blood sugar low because the blood sugar has to be carried into your muscles so that you can move and think and do things, but it's not going to be able to do it without insulin. So type 1 diabetes, uh, they're all deficient in vitamin D and also gut lining has been uh, uh, harmed and then it has a leaky gut. Well, I found out that I had a leaky gut too and that's how I cure my type 2 diabetes or constantly curing daily. It's, you're never better. Once you're diabetic, you're diabetic for the rest of your life. However, how do you manage, how do you control it? Then that's how you really cure, cure. <laughs> it's hard to say cure, but it is curing diabetes by managing your sugar so that sugar is not going up or down. It's too much of up and down that makes you like a roller coaster riding. I know some of you like roller skate riding. I mean, roller, you know, I used to go to Magic Mountain. I used to like all of that. I can't do that anymore, right? I'm, I'm too old now. But the, when you go up and down, it's exciting. But can you imagine doing that all day long, every day? So that's how you feel when you're diabetic because the blood sugar will go up when you eat and you take the medication and bring it down and then too low. So you have to eat sugar fast and then it goes up and down like this and your mood is up. Good, bad, good, bad, all day long. So it's very difficult for you to be nice and calm and healthy because your sugar is just out of control up and down too much in, when you use the medication. So uh, that's how I see it. When you're type 2 diabetic, uh, all of type 2 diabetics are magnesium deficient for some reason. So because of all the stuff going up and down, you just are stressed out all the time. And magnesium is a um, uh, relaxation mineral that would really calm everything down. So it's very important uh, for you to uh, uh, have magnesium in your diet and there are other minerals that you have to take as well. So type 2 diabetic, type 1 is you're born with it pretty much because you've got autoimmune disease. Most people uh, diagnosed with the uh, type 1 diabetic uh, uh, below 20 years old and the type 2 diabetics are old age uh, uh, issue when your sugar is not controlled for many different reasons but uh, about 90% of um, diabetics are type 2, about only 10% are type 1 diabetic. Type 2 diabetic, uh, the problem is you have too much insulin. So your sugar goes up and your body, your pancreas produces a lot of insulin. Type 2 diabetic has no problem producing insulin. So when I see patients come into my office, they're two type 2 diabetic, and they're on insulin for a long period of time. A short period of time you may have to because you have to control your sugar level. But if they're on it for too long, it's not good for the patient because you should not because you don't have lack of insulin problem. You have too much insulin. They just don't know what to do. You, you take the, the sugars there, you need the insulin, go in there and grab it, and then you have to carry it into the cell to get in there. The biggest problem is uh, when you don't exercise, you have no need for sugar. In other words, if you're sitting all day watching TV, a lot of diabetics do that, or most of us, when you do that, you don't need, you're not burning any sugar in your muscles, so your body doesn't need sugar to get into the, uh, the muscles. That's why all the insulin's there hanging out doing nothing, because you have nothing to do. You need work to do, right? This is a very important concept you have to understand. You have to demand certain kind of sugar in your muscles for your insulin to be become sensitive so that it would grab the sugar and put it into it. So one of the best way to improve your diabetes is to exercise all the time. Go walk and especially muscle training. Why? Because when you build muscles, you need to increase the demand of the sugar and then the insulin becomes more sensitive. When you're too much insulin, like my office, we have maybe 20 people working in my office right now. If we have 100 people working, what happens? Well, they're all going to bump into each other. They, they don't know what to do. There's too many people working. And that's what's going on with type 2 diabetes. You're not lacking insulin. You have too much insulin because then they don't have what, they don't know what to do. They don't have any work to do because there's no demand for all the work to carry it into your muscles. So it's a very important thing you have to understand for type 2 diabetes. What are type 3 diabetes? This is a new word that just came out and it is about your brain. What happened is that we're going to talk about the fatty liver a little bit. Uh, when you eat a lot of junk food, when you eat a lot of uh, fruits, a lot of people think it's fruits are really good for diabetics. It's not. It's, it's fructose is very toxic to liver. Why? Because 
it cannot be used in your body, so it has to go to liver, it has to convert into regular sugar to be able to use. In other words, if you have to convert it to something else to be used, that means it's not good in large quantity. A lot of people thinking that, a lot of diabetics thinking that fruits are really good for you because it's got a lot of good stuff. Yes, it, it, they do have a lot of good stuff, but it raises your fructose level and that's not good for us because that, that taxes your liver, causes fatty liver. When, that, when you have a fatty liver, one of the main function of liver is to produce cholesterol. I know a lot of people don't like cholesterol, but that is another bad thing to think that way. Why? Because you need cholesterol, especially in your brain. That's what brain's made of, the cholesterol. Without good cholesterol going into your brain, guess what? You don't have enough materials to make the, uh, the brain cells, so you get Parkinson's disease or Alzheimer's disease. And that's what causes type 3 diabetes, and also your, it causes eye problem, glaucoma as well. And that's called type 3 diabetes because of your fatty liver from all your bad diet, eating too much fruit and grains, and that's what causes type 3 diabetes. And the next thing is, what are the symptoms of, um, of uh, having diabetes? First, your blood sugar goes up, obviously. When that happens, your blood pressure goes up. Why? Because your blood, your blood circulating in your body becomes like a jello. Why? Because sugar is very sticky, right? Very sticky. So what happens is that it's not a fluid like uh, a good water. It becomes like a sugar water. It becomes sticky. So it doesn't um, get your circulation too well. So your heart has to pump harder to circulate the whole body, so the blood pressure goes up. And the triglyceride, which is like a, like a, 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 a cholesterol, but it's three, tri means three. Three glyceride, three sugars put it, clumped up together, triglyceride causes all kinds of circulation and other problems as well. And then that increases your central obesity, we call it, uh, belly fat, and then it, it decreases the HDL, which is a happy cholesterol, okay, or healthy cholesterol. And LDL is, is, is the bad one, which you need to reduce. We need to get your healthy cholesterol higher, and that's what's going down as well. And this causes a whole lot of havoc in your entire body as well. And there are two important players. There are many other players, but this is the most important thing you need to know right now. Now, insulin, you all know. We talked about the insulin. Insulin has to take the sugar and put it into your body, and you, got, uh, you don't have enough insulin in type 1, but type 2 or type 3, you have too much insulin, all the sugar's there, so insulin comes out from the uh, pancreas, but it cannot carry it into, back, into your, back into your body, so what does it do? It, it needs to get rid of it, so they clump it together and then make it fat, and then store them right nearby where they can store where you eat, right? That's why you get central obesity, we call it. And insulin is it becomes insulin resistant because it cannot do its work. It's too much insulin. It's not demanded by the body to carry the sugar into your body. So that's why insulin uh, resistance or they don't, they, they want, probably want to work, but they cannot work too well. So we call them insulin resistant. Probably not a good word. Probably insulin laziness or insulin overburden. It, the name has to change. <laughs> but the next one is the leptin. What happens to leptin is that insulin makes you gain weight because you have to store all the sugar into your uh, you know, nearby area. When, you're, when your fat increases, your body wants to um, tell the brain, okay, I have enough fat. I don't want to eat anymore. However, even leptin become resistance because too much fat causes leptin not to be able to work so that not telling the brain to stop eating. In other words, you keep eating even though you should stop eating. And that's the problem with leptin. Insulin makes you gain weight and leptin makes you keep eating. And this is a huge problem of diabetes because most type 2 and 3 diabetic patients become obese because of this reason. Uh, well, there are other reasons too, but these insulin and leptin, your hormones are not working too well in synchronicity. And this is what's causing type, uh, all, all kinds of diabetic complications. Be sure to like this video if you found it interesting or learned something new. If you think someone else will enjoy it, be sure to send it to them. Stay tuned for my next video in my Diabetic Foot Ulcer Series Part 2 of 6 Holistic Treatment coming out next Sunday. Don't forget to follow me on my other social media channels including Instagram and Facebook to stay updated on everything happening on my channel. Until next time, be educated, get empowered, encourage others today.